Okay, it's now streaming live on Facebook. So well, here we are. Uh, we are back for another segment of A Day of Light and Love 2020, where we are just having some amazing conversations, um, conversations with women around the world, women who have lived, they have lived what they share and um, have the wisdom to share about it. And I am so fortunate to have this segment with a very dear friend of mine, um, Severine, who, Severine, you are in Cancun, if yes. I, yes, and um, Severine, maybe just give uh, people a little bit about yourself, and then I think we're going to have a conversation about uh, gratitude and, and being in the moment that that moves us into the future. Yes. So thank you so much for having me again. This is such a blessing. I look forward to Christmas Day just to have this conversation with you. It's been four amazing years. This is the fourth time. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Severin Nassens. I'm originally from Belgium, uh, but I've been in Cancun, Mexico, in sunny Cancun, Mexico, for the past 21 years already. It's a, a, a whole a whole lifetime. And uh, I've been blessed to have met Dr. Jean in a program called The Sheepless Life. Uh, we did with Yvonne de la Flor, uh, yeah, already four or five years ago. It's time yes. flies. I've, I've lost track of time. I'm going nonlinear here. <laughs> I lose track of the years. Um, and um, I have um, a 13 year old daughter. I have a husband and uh, we, um, we live in Cancun. We enjoy the sunny weather year round. Uh, somebody's got to live in paradise. I mean, somebody's <laughs> got to populate the paradise as well. Uh, I'm a trained communications and efficiency coach, and I have the blessing to work with amazing people around the globe. And um, this year has brought us closer together, even though we're further apart, uh, thanks to the technology. And uh, and this has been this has been a challenge and an exciting year, actually. Um, many people see it as a, they're happy that this one's done. Uh, mm. This is just for me, another year closing and a lot to be grateful for. Uh, a lot of evolution has gone on. Someone asked me the other day, what's, what's the, the word for 2020? And I said, it's automatically evolution because so much has happened to all of us. I mean, I guess around the globe, many, many shifts have happened. So very grateful and honored to be here with you again, Dr. Jean. Well, I, I share with you the, um, you know, you know, a lot of people have lamented 2020 and I'm not here to say that uh, 2020 was some sort of a cakewalk with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that wasn't a bit of an obstacle course. Um, however, when I come to the end of my 2020, I say, wow, I, there was so much, um, there was a lot of challenge, which always brings the uh, potential mm -hmm. for a greater expansion to step into the challenge and overcome whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and at a certain point, I think when we look at challenges and we treat them like battles, we contribute to the resistance mm -hmm. of the challenge and and when we learn to surrender to the challenge and to find the beauty within it, the things to be grateful for, there's then this bounty of things to be grateful for that even emerge from the experience. And I believe that's what, what uh, we were here really to talk about. Yeah. And I think I don't see it as a battle as such. I see it more as an opportunity. I choose to look at the bright side of things, even though... It's been, it's been very challenging for me personally as well. I've had many um, situations that took me way into my darkest night. Um, and I had a lot of um, opportunity to think about what I want to change because of situations I do not want to repeat from this year or from past years. And uh, it's like this year has put it all in overdrive and has put us all like front and center, right? They're in yes. your face, right? For yes. many of us, right in my face, I had the opportunities, uh, the challenges uh, to, to go deep and to really come clean with myself in the very first place. Because if I don't come clean with myself, how can I even pretend to come clean to others, right? 
So that for me this year is what it has brought is a lot of insight, a lot of maturing. Uh, I've grown up a lot in 2020, even though I'm a grown woman. Yes, but I want, can we just, I, I just want to back up the conversation a smidge sure. and you talk about like diving into, is it like an investigation? I mean, what is that process that you use um, and when do you know that you need to um, step into a process like that? When I, I'm going to speak for myself because this is how it works for me and it may work differently for other people. Um, but for me, when I go into a place of a lot of resistance, when I start the battle, when I start yes. getting my, my sword out and say, okay, I'm going to go slay people. That's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute there's there's only and, and this is a, a metaphor that we we use among us it's, there's only one dragon to slay and it's my own right yes when i go into that all right i'm gonna go defensive on everyone that is when i know that's my that's like my cue to go whoa wait a minute step down sit back and and turn turn that camera view around to to towards myself to see what's really going on because and, and one of many of the teachings that Ivana shared with us is that when you go into defensiveness when you go when you are triggered in such a powerful way it's time to go in and look at what it is that is triggering you and many many of the things is stuff from our past stuff from our childhood even and and there's there's always more and more layers to peel off and the more layers you peel the more dark secrets you find from within uh so that is for me my cue is when i start drawing out my sword is my cue to, to stop and 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 take a step back because i go into overdrive and i go full when i when i let myself go i go full in and it's not a pretty sight it's not pretty for me or pretty for anyone around me so but um so what is that process <laughs> like then bless you what is that what is that process like uh, what what do you I know you can only speak to what you do but that's mm -hmm. what we're here to find out <laughs> and so you know uh, what what kind of things would be steps in that process for someone the first step that I do is <clears throat> sorry I write down what I'm feeling I, I I journal I write it down so I can get it out of my head and onto a piece of paper to read over it again and get kind of get clarity on that because so oftentimes when we're in such a state of, it, it becomes overwhelm. It, it's a state of overwhelm because we don't really, we can't put our finger on what it is. So I write it all out and I start, okay, I'm mad with this person about this. I'm mad about this situation. I'm, and what, what am I upset about? What it is, what is it that is taking me off? So I, I write, I write, and that can be very short it can be pages and pages it depends on the situation it depends on on everything that's going on and sometimes it takes me days to pinpoint what it is it's not it's not that oh i'm starting right oh yeah that, got it sometimes it takes days and this year has been one of those years where it's taken me weeks on end to dig in and f get all the dirt out and see what was going on and i found things that I had no clue were there because I keep I kept digging and I kept writing and obviously what helps a lot is having people around me go to my coaches or mentors and tell them listen this is go this is what's going on and bear my soul and and help them because sometimes we need someone external to ask those uncomfortable yes. questions yes Be or, or even they from their view because it, it it's not personal to them no, and, it isn't. and so then they can ask a question that reveals a, a part of the truth that can act as the catalyst to revealing yes. way more truth. Exactly, because you can only for yourself and it need it takes training and it takes experience and maturity to be able to pinpoint it on yourself by your by yourself on your yes. own, having that external help. As you say, it's a catalyst and it'll go fast. <laughs> Things go fast from there. It takes one good question to go, okay, 
that's that's where we need to go yes and otherwise i know from my past experience that um it, it's um otherwise it, it it sets up a circuit that just runs 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 and you and you can't get to there's no switch yes right and so it's a continuum and um it is great to be able to have somebody see what we can't yet see yes and oftentimes it's so obvious for those around us yes and we can't see because we're blindsided yes it's our ego it's our own lamenting it's our own whatever there's plenty of things going layers on. layers our glasses is the, we're just kind of yes. blindsided because we don't want to see oftentimes you you know it's there you go okay i'm just gonna ignore that yeah, <laughs> just not that's gonna where the layers come from we it's it's there's a bit of self-preservation in there and and you know i mean at the time maybe it's what was needed for where we were in the journey um and but now it's the thing that's actually holding us back from <clears throat> yeah. more fully embodying who we really are yeah so it's it's a blessing to have to know who to call <laughs> yes. okay this is this is me. I need I need I need that question, right? We yes. and especially among coaches, we know we're professional question askers. Yes. So we will we will um, we will reach out. So if anybody, my suggestion would be if anyone, if you're struggling, and you're just not you don't you you it seems you're in a dead end, reach out to someone for support. This sh that's a shortcut. The shortcut is to connect with someone. Yeah who can help you. And mm -hmm. that is a shortcut. But you, you talk, bringing this around to gratitude, um, where does the gratitude, I mean, is there a process then um, where gratitude becomes uh, the operating basis? Um, once again, stepping into gratitude is taking me time. It's taken me many years of, of understanding and coming into that maturity of being grateful for anything that happens. Mm -hmm. And even if it's bad, I mean, I've yeah. been through situation nasty, like not nice at all. However, I've learned that when I look, I always look at the situation and say, okay, this is like really, it, it, it sucks. It, it's not nice. I have plenty of things to complain about, but what is one thing, one little tiny thing even that I can be grateful for within this situation? Yeah. And then I, and I focus on that. And then once you start focusing on the gratitude, magic happens because all of the dark stuff starts to lighten up. It kind of pulls the balance up into the light, it pulls the balance up into that feeling of expanding love. And I don't know how come or why that is that is for me still a mystery. But when I tap into that gratitude, out of a situation that is ugly, one little thing I can be grateful for, and it tilts the balance, magic happens, my heart explodes, I, I become so I even become happy about it. It's like, how can you be happy about that situation? I'm, I just am. It may sound, if you think about it, it's not logical, but it is the best way for me to work through pain. It's the best way for me to work through anything really is to be grateful for that one little thing. And then it, it's like a chain reaction, more gratitude, gratitude because you find more things to be grateful for that are linked to that one little, you just have to find that one tiny spot to be grateful for, and it will open up a whole new view of the situation. And I think um, knowing what you want um, precedes doing that work because many people will just stay locked in that circuit of, of grumbling, complaining, feeling sorry for themselves, feeling put on, feeling unforgiving, any number of things. I mean, there are authentic emotions that can yes. be connected to a situation. Um, but when you're realizing that what I'm creating right now is planting the seeds 
for what I will experience, yes. there's a point where you say, no, I'm going to step in. And even if I can't get to the root of it right now, like you said, I'm going to find something inside of this that I can be grateful for, that there's, that there's a seed of gratitude that can be planted mm-hmm. um, because that seed plants another step yes. in, in the path going forward and it releases, I don't know, it just sheds light on it, it starts to prepave the path that you are now going to walk instead of staying in that circuit of, mm-hmm. um, of dimness or darkness. And it's, it's within futuring what we learn is that you plant those seeds. And if you go back, if you, even if you think back of last year, what are the things that you have been grateful for? Look back on those things. What were you grateful for exactly one year ago? And then see what has happened based on that over oh. the past year. And learning that within the future, I'm just throwing gratitude bombs out there, not even seeds. They're huge. I love because that. I, I know that someday it doesn't possibly not tomorrow and possibly yes, tomorrow. You don't yes. know because when, when you're in that vibration of gratitude, miracles do happen. And I'm not talking about like biblical miracles. It's just the one that those little daily little miracles that start happening and having your attitude up there is going to help you with more resiliency. I've become more resilient this year than I think that I've done over the last 10 or 20. Wow. Because of the situations that have presented in my life. And, um, and what a beautiful blessing because. Oh, yes. Oh, that, that going is. Going uh... forward. It's like, okay, anything can come now. <laughs> I'm prepared. I'm good. I can take the, I can do this. Right. Yes. I got oh, this. Amazing. Um, any, um, anything that you want to, any steps? I know you talked about writing. Um, do you have a daily gratitude um, practice, ritual? Um, it's not nothing fancy. Um, basically, what I do before I step out of my bed, I'm grateful for whatever's coming my way. And it's just, it's a split second thought that helps me tune in because I've, I've done that as well, going, ah, oh, grumpy, right? Get out of my bed, really grumpy. Like, oh, just another day and I have to go face this and I have to go face that. I've learned that when I do that in the morning, my whole day oh, is, yes. is, it doesn't go really well because I get grumpy. I get into discussions with my daughter, with my husband, where I'm kind of on edge and I, it's, I don't like to be there. So I've learned that just being grateful for, okay, great. Yeah, I got this. This is just a beautiful day. I got to do this, or I want to do this or this or that. Yeah. I will face this with gratitude and love in my heart. One of the things that I learned from Ogmandino is face the day with gratitude in my heart, with love in my heart. And it works out. And even if things go wrong, just remember um, to keep going and not let yourself be put down by anything around you because we're in control of our feelings have those emotions. I cry. I get angry. I do all of the, all of the whole, I go through the whole spectrum of emotions, but I allow myself to live through them and I don't stay there. I live through them. I'm grateful for the pain. I'm grateful for the sorrow. I'm grateful for all of it because it's what makes me stronger and helps me move forward. So my ritual, just, it's just a split second thought in the morning uh, and that just tunes in onto the frequency I want to be at. It's like choosing your radio station for the day. That's awesome. Do you feel like um, staying in gratitude helps you access the lesson inside the event faster. easier, faster? Yes. yes, it is. It does help because I, I, I try to see, and it, it doesn't always work, okay? This is something that it takes practice, and, and I do go down that path of darkness. But I have learned that seeing things with gratitude will help me see things with love and will help me look for the good. It will help me look for the, the bright side of things. It will help me look for that little spark of joy 
that is out there within whatever is going on. Uh, and it could be very, very tiny, but that's like a tiny thing to hang on to. It's like the little Christmas lights on your tree, right? Grab onto that one little tiny light and go from there and know that there is always light. I know, and that is an, a, a known fact for me, that there is always light at the end of the tunnel, always. Always. 100% I, of it. Yeah, and I do think that when you have gone through some tunnels, in life, that's a metaphor, of course, but you've gone yeah. through periods of darkness and um, that flickering, like that little pin, pinhole of light is so evident though in a dark tunnel. Mm -hmm. And then the closer, it, as you move through it, then you keep progressing. Yes, it, the light just expands as you grow closer to it. And mm -hmm. um, I think one of the themes of today, um, it's been a thread is the moving through, like, don't stop, move through, be willing to experience the emotions yes. and, and get the assistance if you need, but move through to, and, and that brings up um, something I'd like to um, have you talk about before we close. And that is, um, we've talked about the future, mm -hmm. we've talked about, I mean, clearly, you're pre-paving um, your immediate future yes. with that first thought of the day. Like it's an intentional, you are intentionally programming your future. But let's talk about the future as in 2021. Let's talk about um, what, what can you say to people who are um, either on right now or they're um, watching the replay? And and what does that mean like to that that through um, through gratitude and being in the moment, we can I, walk into the future mm -hmm. um, with a different sense of um, empowerment. I think if we live in this moment with the gratitude for what is now, not looking back on what's been tough, what's been hard, I mean, all of that shapes us and all of that brings us strength, resiliency, knowledge, wisdom, it all of that matters. But being grateful for today, being grateful for what is to come. I mean, we, I, I always say that the, we, we say, you know, that the future is a safe place. And understanding that, that we will be, we will be fine. It's just the matter of moving, as you said, moving through it, being present today, being grateful at this very moment. I'm, I'm with gratitude for this call. I'm with gratitude for the sun that's shining. I'm in gratitude just for the little things, for being able to wake up healthy with my family. All these little things that are such big things that do matter. And we know now health is really something, health and time are things that are very precious to all of us. And this year is taught us that. So being grateful for that today helps me move forward with a steady pace into tomorrow, into the future, and helps me leave those little seeds or gratitude bombs, whatever you choose to leave. Yes. Um, as you step, it's like one of the, from those stories, no, where you, where you start walking and you leave seeds or breadcrumbs. Oh yes. On your path. This yes. is I prefer to, to leave little gratitude breadcrumbs mm. as I walk. Also, because I'm a mom. That is what I want to teach my daughter to do in life and keep moving. Even though it's a hard day, even though you're facing challenges, yes. be grateful for the challenges because the challenges are the ones that will bring the wisdom, the resiliency, the every single tool that you need to step into that future stronger, solidly, and just face it and move on. Face it and move on. And, and that is that's how I do it. That's how I work. That's how Beautiful. I operate. And it's it works. I mean, I've 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 been facing things that I had never thought I'd had to face, but it's part of it, it. It's like it's part of the show. It's part of the package <laughs> that comes with this lifetime. It's just. Yes. It's, it's not that I, I look forward to hardship. I don't, <laughs> but, 
but it's just part of it's part of the game you know it's part of the game and and as we move through it you can look back on things and say i went through all of that cool how did i make it through gratitude keep on going resiliency get clarity on what you want what you said earlier on it's so important if you know with clarity where you want to go and what it is you want to achieve the rest doesn't really matter you know it's just circumstance yes so get clarity and be grateful be i'm so grateful for for you for everybody watching i'm grateful for this day i'm grateful for being alive and being able to support and being able to serve and help others on their path uh thanks to all of the things that i've been through all of that serves me yes so it does if it can help someone else I'm more than happy to share thank you so much that was absolutely fabulous well thank you thank you for having me again this is i'm looking forward to next year already i know i know it'll be the fifth anniversary next year yeah the fifth annual annual so oh it's very exciting i do love coming and and having these wonderful conversations with you amazing 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 women i'm going to say people these amazing people yeah. because i don't know that we've ever I intentionally excluded men, um, no. but uh, boy, these, uh, the women that show up here and serve, they're just yeah. outstanding. And so thank you for being part of this and Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to your Same beautiful to you. family. Thank you. Same thank to you. you and yours and everybody around. Uh, it doesn't have to be Christmas to be grateful. No, uh, I'm grateful you're around. So thank you. thank you once again, and I wish you many blessings and a great end of year and a great start of year. It's just, we're changing calendar. We're changing a number on the calendar. Life goes on. So it does keep enjoying. <laughs>